Professor Alex Ford is a professor of biology at the University of Portsmouth's Institute of Marine Sciences and has been examining the impact that sewage is having on marine life. Very good of you to come on the programme this afternoon, Professor Ford. Give us a, a broad overview of what you're finding is happening to marine life that is in and around these pipes. Uh, well, it's certainly not a good um, picture because, as you've sort of dictated, there was um, four, close to four million hours worth of sewage discharges, which um, equates to about 450 years worth, if you do it in, in years. And it's been over a thousand years worth over the last three years, if you add it all together. So though that sewage doesn't just contain poo and, and, and pee, Thank it you. contains many of the chemicals that we use every day from detergents, washing up liquids, shampoos, all the pharmaceuticals mm -hmm. that we consume don't get broken down in sewage treatment plants very well. Um, and if it goes out completely untreated, then you have quite high levels of pharmaceuticals going out, which we know can affect our wildlife. I perhaps should have put a little warning on this before uh, before we went into poo and pee and everything else if someone was eating their tea at this time, Alex. But so So give us an example of what it is you are finding in inside marine life as a result of all this these hours and days of pumping well, we've done some analysis of marine life along with uh, brunel university just outside um southern water's largest wastewater treatment plant and we we collected some crab shrimp seaweed oysters limpets ragworm and they're full of antidepressants uh, anti-anxiety medication headache tablets contraceptive pill cocaine mdma methamphetamine what? so the, everything that humans take in terms of a drug whether it be prescribed or illegal you can find in every single one of the organisms you found we, oysters with cocaine in them exactly that yeah wow and and that was far more prevalent and common than perhaps would have been the case 20 years ago or whenever a previous study was done or have you got that ability to contextualize um, well, it well we we don't know because not not many people were actually analyzing for cocaine that long ago, but we did know 20 years ago that if you cage a fish downstream of a sewage treatment plant, um, a male fish that is, it'll start to feminize because of the estrogens that come out of a sewage treatment plant when it's working correctly. Um, it doesn't break down all the estrogens from the contraceptive pill, HRT, uh and many chemicals that just act like estrogens, and they will start to feminize. So male fish will start producing yolk protein, and you can measure that in their blood. No way. So obviously when all these stormwater overflows are sort of spilling out into our rivers and our seas, um, the concentrations of those drugs are, are a lot higher than they would be if they'd gone through a sewage treatment work appropriately. So the fish are being feminized because all the, the, the runoff, for want of a better phrase, from the contraceptive pill is flowing... Uh, untreated into the waters. That's astonishing. Yep. What impact does but that have on the ecosystem if you've got very feminised male fish? Well, this is what the questions that people started to answer. And uh, a Canadian study, they got given permission to add contraceptive pill to a lake at the concentrations that you would find downstream of a typical sewage treatment plant. And what happened was within three years, all the fish had died. They'd feminised and the population collapsed. Because there was no, there was no the, reproduction the, going on. Yeah, the, the males were became infertile and uh, weren't wow. able to reproduce. Gosh, that's terrifying. So, what we're interested in now is well, one in ten people are taking antidepressants and obviously they're designed to affect behaviour. Um, so when we give marine life antidepressants, um, it changes their behaviour as well in, in, in quite bizarre ways. So, Go on. In, like, um, in what you, way? Um, uh, they become more active. Um, some of the studies we've done has shown that they become more attracted to light. So serotonin in our brains uh, controls our behaviour, but in a, in a crustacean, it makes them uh, attracted to light. So if you increase their serotonin, they'll spend more time in the light side of a tank than in a in the dark side of a, of a tank during a lab experiment. And what happens if you put a load of cocaine in there? Um, we tried cocaine and... Um, no effects whatsoever. Other people with fish have found, found that fish get more active, and that's what we anticipated what, what would happen with little shrimp. Uh, but so far, we haven't found anything. But we were just measuring the speed at which they were swimming. Very good to talk to you. Absolutely fascinating. Slightly terrifying as well. Professor Alex Ford, Professor of Biology at the University of Portsmouth Institute of Marine Sciences.
Imagine that, you got, what did you do at work today? Oh, I chucked a load of contraceptives into, <laughs> I chucked the contraceptive pill into a massive lake to see what would happen. Amazing. 